So now that I'm a complete beginner in a brand new language, yet again. Ça pourrait vécu cette position basse de demande, peut-être vécu comme quelque chose d'extrêmement humiliant. I had to remind myself of the same strategies that I used and I thought I would share them with you today. Hello, hello. If you're wondering why the thumbnail looks different than the video, it is because this is not a new video. I'm actually reposting, recalibrating my channel. It's not reposting if the new subscribers haven't seen my old content and I'm using this opportunity to take a sabbatical of sorts while I work on something really exciting that's to come by the end of this year, I promise. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my latest ebook, which is a complete guide on how to learn English or any other language on your own. It includes a detailed study plan with all the tools and resources that you need. I've also addressed some of the common misconceptions and questions. Reading a book will help you understand, oh, this is what I did wrong before, and this is what I should do. No matter what stage you're in, in terms of your learning journey, this book is going to help you out so immensely, I promise. Or refund back to you, no questions asked. All right, let's get on with the video. Number one, I don't worry about speaking, at least in the beginning, or rather any form of self-expression, okay? There's very little output when you're learning a brand new language. All you should be focusing on is input, comprehension, namely understanding what the native speaker is trying to say, understanding what this article is trying to say. Because even if you force yourself to memorize a bunch of phrases or you memorize a dialogue that you see in a textbook, there's no predicting what the native speaker would say to you. You can't predict the range of vocabulary that the native speaker will have. My very first five or even six months, like I kept my mouth shut. I read lots of books. I like would scour through the subtitles religiously. Make sure you build your vocabulary. Make sure you understand the basics of a sentence, the basics of grammar. Even if at any given moment, someone speaks 10 sentences to you and you just utter one single word. As long as you can understand what the other person is saying, you'll be fine. Like comprehension is so underrated. Once you've accumulated a certain amount of input, quality input, mind you, speaking comes naturally. You don't have to force it. You can't force it, you know? And anybody that tells you otherwise is lying to you. Number two, I don't focus on real life words. That's including numbers, days of the week, months, and how to tell time, and anything with the picture attached to it. Words like a girl, a book, a computer, a desk. I never force myself to even spend time on it, let alone memorize it. There's no point in trying to memorize real life words because you could just use Google Translate or a Google Images. You can even go to a bookstore and buy one of those like photo dictionary books. When in need, every time you go into a new environment, say someone else's living room, then you can look up words that will often come up in a living room. On the contrary, it's abstract words that are hard to translate that you can't look up quickly in a dictionary or in Google Translate or Baidu Translate. Those are the words that are very versatile, useful, but complex and definitely require extra hours of study. So I've always prioritized learning verbs, adjectives, adverbs, conjunctions, just any words that I can use myself and use in any scenario. Besides words like months or days of the week and numbers even will come up often enough if you use the language, if you actually pronounce things, because if you can pronounce things, you can usually spell it out. But there's no point in studying only those words and, and knowing how to like name a picture or name a subject. That's not speaking the language. That's just knowing how to name objects. So a lot of people end up knowing how to say one to 10 in English or say mother and father, girl or boy, but they can't speak a whole sentence because they don't have enough understanding of abstract words and even basic grammar structure. So yeah, use your time wisely. Number three, I use a monolingual dictionary, especially for abstract words like we talked about before. And I know not everybody can do it, especially in the beginning, but the point is you should strive for it. Like you should at least try to transition into using a monolingual dictionary because, okay, if you find a good one, which I haven't, at least in French, but in English, I swear by this English dictionary, I swear by this monolingual dictionary because the definition is very easy to understand. You can sometimes understand the word better. Well, most of the time understand the word better 
in English than if you were to understand it in Chinese. Because languages are so different, most of the time, uh, especially for abstract words, there's no word for word translation. It's not accurate if you always use Chinese translation. And every time you speak, you have to translate that word into English. Every time you try to understand other people, you have to translate English into your native language. And that is a waste of time. It takes up so much of your mental space. And in speaking, everything happens fast. So do your best to transition into a monolingual dictionary. But even if you don't, you can use a monolingual dictionary. Try your best to incorporate some phrases or examples so that the next time you want to use this word, you're not thinking of the translation. You're not thinking of your native language. You're thinking of a phrase. The point is you got to cut out the middleman because the middleman slows you down and the middleman is not accurate. Ideally, your two languages should be parallel in your brain, like they should not intersect. You could totally understand an English word without using Chinese. You can try to understand a harder word using simple English. Number four, I focus on something with the context first. So instead of learning individual words on a word list, I usually prefer a TV show or an article or you know, a book, anything with the context, anything with sentences right next to each other and there's a chance for me to run into the same word over and over again. So once I find a good language material, I focus in on the material one at a time. People spend so little time reading these days. And when they do find a good material, they just gloss over everything. They can't wait to get to the next lesson or they can't wait to get to the next chapter. It's like, no, especially when you're a native, you're a non-native speaker, you gotta squeeze out every piece of good information from the same material. Like I've been working on this TED talk in French and I use it to practice my pronunciation. I use it to learn some of the common expressions, spoken expressions or very formal written expressions. And it's been like weeks, if not months since I started and I still find new information. I still find something I haven't noticed before. I'm not afraid to spend more time than needed on a piece of material because I know the benefits are totally worth it. Like I'm at a point where I can almost memorize the whole speech. When I recite the speech out loud, it's like I'm giving a speech in French. So don't be afraid to first of all, spend time finding a good material that has the proper range of vocab, the proper amount of difficulty in terms of grammar, in terms of uh, pronunciation. And then once you find a good material, dedicate yourself to it. And on that note, on finding the proper material for you, if for instance, you always watch American TV shows, you have friends from America, don't then read Jane Austen and then wonder, how come I can't understand a run of the mill American dude? It's like, yeah, because he's not an 18th century English author. Languages evolve over time. Read something contemporary, read something like preferably nonfiction first because you don't use most of the words that you would encounter in a, in a fiction. Be very picky about what you read. I gotta make a video on like beginner friendly books or beginner friendly language materials. So that is it. I guess some of these are not really counterintuitive. They're just common sense, but I feel like bringing it up. Do let me know if you're learning a language, be it English or French, if you're also learning French. And yeah, let's hype each other up. This is me hyping you up. Okay, all right, bye.